<laughs> well, let's let's talk about that. No, not for, not for. So let's call our September 12th, 2024 Airport Advisory Board meeting to order. Nice to see everybody here. We have a full slate here. Um, Kayla, would you mind calling the roll to start us off, please? Chairperson Harrison Earl. Here. Vice Chairperson Melinda George. Levi Brown. Here. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, first on our agenda, as always, is our public invited to be heard. Public members, would anyone like to kick us off here and like to make a comment? Yes. Come on down to the microphone, Levi, if you could turn on the mic, please. Yes, thank you, um, you got five minutes to address your comments to the board, and if you can start with your name and address. Sure. My name is Louis Beaupre, and I live at 1650 Stardance Circle here in Longmont. And that is um, almost immediate, right next to County Line Road, behind the new hospital. And I mentioned that just because it's in reference to the proximity to the airport. Um, I just had really uh, I called Levi or emailed you a week or two ago, and you said, hey, come to this meeting, and it'd be the best place to exchange the information. Um, I don't have a gripe at all. I just really want to learn. Um, maybe there's a gripe in there. I'm not sure. We'll, we'll find out at the end. But um, no, no problem with the, the airport. Um, I appreciate airport traffic. My dad's a private pilot. I've flown in and out of Vance Brand on his, on his done touch and goes. Don't have any problem with skydiving. My, my concern is just, or my concern is around my ignorance on uh, airplanes, pilots, f uh, flyways, and so forth. Seems to me um, there's a lot, in my mind, unnecessary traffic around residential neighborhoods but even more um, around like Rabbit Mountain Open Space and Union Reservoir. I spend a lot of time at both those places. There's one pilot that for some reason loves to do acrobatic training right over Rabbit Mountain. And I think, hmm, that's odd. I mean, of all the places. Um, I talked to your predecessor, Levi, a couple times about this guy. He said, oh, I think that might be Bob. Uh, I don't know if the message ever got to Bob. But my, my really appeal was, hey, could somebody just ask Bob to go somewhere maybe more agricultural or industrial that wouldn't upset the users of Rabbit Mountain? Um, and then I guess more uh, recently, Union Reservoir. I, I actually work for the city of Longmont as a lifeguard. I'm a retiree. So I, I spent a whole lot of time at Union Reservoir this summer. And when I'm out lifeguarding, I'm kayaking out there and fishing. And there are just pilots that circle this place all day long. And, and I get the, the periodic flyover, show your passenger, take a nice look at the water. But I just don't understand the, the, the circling of neighborhoods and places like Rabbit Mountain and Union Reservoir. So I'll stop with kind of my position and just ask, are there, are there, reasons, are, are there reasons that pilots would do that? So... I apologize, but in our public mind to be heard, we can't do a back and forth. Oh, I'm per sorry. Our rules. Okay. What I can tell you is that we can bring it up in our comments okay. a little later on in the meeting. Okay. okay. Um, and I know there are pilots on the board who would probably be willing to speak with you after the meeting informally sure. too. Sure. So okay. I apologize, we can't do that. Good. I, I didn't. Un I didn't appreciate that. So if I still, how much more time do I have? You've got about two and a half minutes. Okay. Um, so yeah, I guess my position is, wouldn't it make sense for pilots to use common sense, regulate themselves, help minimize public relations problems? Because I do perceive a real significant public re relations problem every every other day in the TC line, somebody's ranting or raving about something. I don't want to come across as one of those people. Um, but I do think it's fair to say, hey, why are these people flying around those areas that I've mentioned? I think it's analogous to if we had a Harley Davidson club and they were circling neighborhoods and parks, I think you'd hear from a lot of homeowners going, hey, what's going on here? I don't think the private pilots would appreciate Harley Davidson clubs circling their neighborhoods and circling the places they like to enjoy the peace and quiet. So I'm just suggesting the advisory council maybe influence, provide or exercise whatever influence you have to encourage pilots to use common sense, common courtesy, because I think it's in the best interest of the airport if they do that. Otherwise, at some point, there may be a, a call for closing that airport, redeveloping it for something else. I don't know. Maybe maybe I don't know what I'm talking about, but that's my pitch. Um, yeah. Oh, I guess you can't tell me, but I am. Maybe I can Google it. Are there mufflers for airplanes? <laughs> no? Okay. All right. I'll sit down. And how your meetings run about how long? 
I'm going to guess tonight it's going to be less than an hour would be my guess. Okay, I'll, I'll hang around for a um, bit. What I would tell you is there is a final public invited to be heard. We can discuss this as a board. Um, we can kind of send information out mm -hmm. earlier in the meeting, and if you have further questions, you can come back, and I know that's kind of inefficient. No, I don't, I don't but look But that's look our far. best way to do that, I think. Um, I, I, I may have missed what you said. So, so during our meeting? Yeah. I think we can bring this up as something we can talk about. Okay. We can't have a back and forth with Understood. you. Understood. Okay. But then if you want to, at the final public invited to be heard, you're welcome to come back if there's something we missed. Gotcha. Um, but in this meeting. You, you suspect there might be an opportunity for you to talk about this. Yes. Okay. I do. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate the comments, and thank you for understanding what we can and can't do. Dr. Grunsfeld. So I'd like to... Uh, Thank the Airport Advisory Board again Can for their support. You start name and address, please. Oh, sorry, sorry. John Grunsfeld, 229 Airport Road. Um, I'd like to thank the Airport Advisory Board again for weighing in on our uh, development near the airport issue. Uh, I assume we're allowed to say Modern West 2 now. And I want to thank uh, Councillor uh, McCoy for his support uh, during the council meetings. Um, I think it would be uh, very useful if the airport advisory board continues to work on the issue of development near the airport and specifically uh, work with uh, the city and the city planning department so that in the airport influence area that the city council addresses and hopefully passes a i guess it would be an ordinance that requires city planning to inform the airport manager Levi, the airport advisory board, uh, and perhaps the you know airport community through some communication when there is development within the airport influence area, rather than the current code, which says it's optional and at the discretion of the city planner. So it says the, it, and I can't cite the code right now, it was in one of my memos uh, that I think many of you have seen uh, that was included in the package. Um, but the code says, you know, 300 feet, 1,000 feet, and the planner may consult other stakeholders as appropriate. Uh, it should say, shall uh, inform, you know, have public comment on any developments within the airport influence area. And then second ordinance that would be useful, uh, short of rezoning, would be in the paddles, you know, that we're now so familiar with, not only off of the departure end of 1-1, but off the departure end of 2-9, which we've never talked about because currently it's farmland, uh, we ought to consider an ordinance that limits development uh, to exclude residential development or you know, something to keep us out of the, the current situation that we're in. Um, the alternative is for the city to purchase that land um, and we heard wonderful open space discussions at the last three city council meetings, and the city has a budget for such. Um, we've also seen that the city has exercised eminent domain for the St. Frayne Greenway to, pres to acquire and preserve open space. So I think there are options there, uh, and I'd highly encourage the city to think about that in the two paddles. Um, I think outside of that, you know, there's a balance between development for airport uses and development for for housing. And on the the, the end of Modern West One and Two, uh, anything further out from the runway is basically fully developed. And then there's power lines, so we've missed the opportunity to have any influence over that. But I think closer, which is closer than 2,000 feet from the end of the runway, which is already not very far, uh, I'd like you to keep up the pressure. Um, I have been in contact as a citizen uh, with the FAA and with the Colorado Department of Transportation, um, and Modern West One is considered, although they haven't formally uh, you know, made that presentation to the city, an incompatible land use. So we're still in a situation where uh, the FAA may withdraw funding for the airport until we resolve that. And the only reason they haven't weighed in is because nobody told them about it. Uh, you know, they just simply weren't consulted until after council went ahead and approved uh, planning and then council approved that. Um, you know, they, they were made aware of it only during the Modern West II 
uh, situation in which they were made aware of it after city planning had approved Modern West II. So uh, with that, I will uh, just again thank all of you. And you know, I'd be happy to work uh, with any of you or with Levi to help draft, even though I'm not an attorney, um, but draft language that you could then massage and perhaps send to the city for recommendations on ordinances that would protect that area and require planning to consult with you when there are new developments under proposal. Thank you. Thank you. I can look around and tell, but for formality's sake, does anyone else like to address us when the first public invited to be heard? Seeing no one, I will close that and we'll move on to approval of August 2024 minutes. Um, do I have any revisions to the minutes? Vice Chair Jordan. All right. Page one, line 22. Uh, Rich, um, Richard Basselier is the president of Longmont Owners and Pilots, so strike owner and make it president. Line 26, it's just grammatical. He apologized for his lack of support instead of my. Line 33, uh, it said was not complaint with their guidelines, and that was compliant. And 20, yeah, I was proofing while Matt was out flying. Um, 27. <laughs> Um, I had asked how much fuel and You're it should be page two there. Right? I'm sorry page two line 27 I'd asked how much unleaded fuel the Centennial Airport is selling and what volume looks like I think that was it they were all just small ones that's all I saw thank you for those um, I noticed two other ones so on page four line five um, there's an acronym RPZ, RPC. I think that's supposed to be RPZ. Mm -hmm. um, and then between line 13 and line 14, we should have a note in there that um, council member Sean McCoy returned to the meeting at that point after his recusal. <laughs> Otherwise, we just have him leaving and never coming back. <laughs> Um, does anyone have anything else that they noticed? Would anyone like to make a motion to approve the minutes with those amendments? Mr. Dean. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. As amended? As amended. Is there a second? I'll second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Information items, updates from the airport manager. Levi. All right, I got a quick list for you today. Um, <clears throat> information items, um, projects moving forward um, as expected. Currently two projects uh, sitting with procurement. That's be the wildlife fence and then the pavement rehab. So they're in the stage of getting contracts and stuff like that written up. Um, the wildlife fence one's already been bid on. The pavement one will be up next for that. <clears throat> Um, other big things on my plate recently, apart from uh, development or the air show, which there's other items on this list, um, just moving forward with kind of the aftermath of the House Bill 1235, um, which we are familiar with, we've talked about here before, which spoke about the transition to unleaded fuel and also had in it some requirements for noise abatement program, which fortunately, we as an airport already have a pretty robust noise abatement program. Um, so moving forward with making sure... Um, Again, we're all well within compliance. That's already posted on the website. Um, it's already in our airport facility directory, which isn't even required by the House bill, but we have anyway posted there. Um, it is now posted in the FBO, the procedures for the, the uh, noise abatement program. I had a meeting this morning with um, the major flight schools that actually um, fly in and out of Longmont. Um, that was actually already set up, so I just used that as an opportunity also to go talk about the noise abatement program. So that's great. That checks off another checklist from their requirements for that about outreaching to the community. And an additional, I think, moving forward, uh, kind of along with the uh, updates from the airport manager in our airport advisory board meetings, we'll also just probably include a, an information item on updates for noise abatement program. And that will move us as we move into the future. Uh, we can say with all honesty that every month we have a public meeting where we can address issues for, about the noise abatement program um, from the airport. So kind of been working on that. Um, those are kind of the 
major things I had on my list. Are there any questions regarding that? Can we stick with noise for a second? Go for it. And use this as the opportunity to discuss the comments that we heard. Yeah. Um, can you clarify just briefly what's in the noise abatement procedure from the airport, what the airport controls, or what the airport can make recommendations for, particularly we can do that. as they relate to some of the other? I can give terms. a general yeah. overview of it. Um, so the airport itself doesn't have uh, the authority, if you will, to necessarily regulate uh, traffic when it may come and go. Uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The best way usually to think about an airport is it's much like a, you know, a seaport where kind of the, the base where, where craft come and go from. Once they kind of leave our boundaries, we don't have any authority or control. At the end of the day, the FAA does control all uh, violations as it's, it's related to flying. Um, usually when people ask me about issues with that, I will direct them to the FAA and, and ask them if they've got tail numbers and stuff like that. They can then then reach out to the FAA. FAA can use their information to determine if they were potentially breaking regulations or not. Um, we as the airport um, do want to encourage um, that good neighbor policy as much as possible. As a part of that, we do have a noise abatement procedure. So that includes things like preferential runways, you know, not using max power um, at certain you know, stages of flight if so required. It's actually a very long detailed um, noise abatement procedure. Perhaps next month it'd be a good thing that we could go over and review in detail. I don't happen to have a copy of it with me um, today, but it includes many things. You know, of course, keeping good tight patterns. You know, trying to to avoid major population areas and stuff like that. And um, it's something we have, in my opinion, um, been kind of leaders in the Colorado flying community promoting before. And now that we actually have some regulation through Colorado, we're continuing to be um, kind of leaders on promoting our noise abatement procedures to um, the pilot community. So it's a voluntary noise abatement procedure. It it's posted on our website. Yeah. There is a section in there that says, you know, effectively, I'm going to paraphrase, you know, complaints can be avoided using common sense and courtesy. Examples include uh, flying in continuous circles over city or outlying residential area. Um, performing acrobatic maneuvers over houses and things like that. Um, I've got two people waiting to talk about this. So, Mr. Menza, I'll start with you. Great. Can you hear me all right? Okay. So, when you met with your your other folks from the, the flight schools, Levi, did you guys talk about any other the surrounding areas about where kind of the, the pilot student pilots go or or fly? We didn't talk in great detail about the, the potential practice areas um, in any you know. Of course, um, those practice areas are going, any practice area, which is it's going to be over an unpopulated area. That's common sense, and, um, it, you know, that's just going to be the way it is. Unfortunately, Union Reservoir is going to be one of those areas because it's an unpopulated area, which was brought up earlier. Um, if something were to occur to the aircraft, there's less of a chance of them, you know, striking a building, striking a person if they're practicing over an unpopulated, sparsely populated area, I should say. So maybe... Uh, part of the public um, outreach or, or information that we give to the public about the airport, we can maybe put a little piece of that education in there. So Lake Union is the, all from Broomfield all the way up to Fort Collins. There's a, one of the biggest flight training areas now in the country is is here. And it's Broomfield, Centennial. It's all these outlying airports. It's just all the way from Colorado Springs. And Lake Union is a circular, that is a, a checkpoint for the students to mm -hmm. um, fly either north or south, and they practice maneuvers over it. Uh, FA requirement is, you know, 1,500 feet or uh, AGL above the, uh, above objects. And so they're doing that, but I don't know, maybe in the future, if we get them all together, we can, we can uh, kind of see what everybody else is using. There's a common area of frequency for all those little mm -hmm. checkpoints. Lake Union's one there of is. them. Yep. And there's so many student pilots from all over the front range that, that use that to coordinate um, where they're going to go do their practice area mm -hmm. and they're doing a lot of turns because they're practicing their turn maneuvers and their um, eights on pilings all those different things so um, maybe on the website we can see this is a very high activity um, location in the country a lot of flight training from all different airports that come to northern Colorado to practice their landings their maneuvers um, and we do uh, the best we can to to keep uh, people safe um, and then I don't know. Do we have the aerobatic box listed somewhere for? Yeah. There should be so, one on there. Over Rabbit Mountain. Yeah. So Rabbit Mountain is the aerobatic mm -hmm. box that um, the FAA has de designated because there's two mm -hmm. 
there's two um, arrival corridors in Denver. So, because uh, I've had to talk to them before to do my aerobatics and my jet and my my yak. So I've had to talk to them to make sure that if I go north from that box towards uh, Carter Lake, that I'm not interfering with the uh, the corridor above. So, so that's kind of why that aerobatic box is where it is, and it's not used very often. So we don't have a lot of use in there. There's not a lot of people to do aerobatics, but um, but it's a safe place for the aviators to do it where they're out of the. Mm-hmm. Out of the corridor and then out of the way from the class Bravo airspace. So again, more maybe our website can have a public information section that kind of talks about the the area, and then maybe that we can help with that in the future. So mm-hmm. that'd be a good addition. Yeah. To, yeah. And I don't know who 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 does. Do you update the website? Um, I I can call in and have it updated. Okay. I can't update it directly. Myself. But you're the guy that gets input. Yeah. Okay. I'm usually the one that they call and or I call them right. and they go back and forth. Yeah. So we can kind of work on that as a team if you guys want yeah. later. Yeah. Yeah. That's an excellent idea. Yeah. Mr. Meester. Uh, Matthew actually kind of covered my topic. Um, the aerobatics box has moved historically. It used to be right over Long Island Stage. It moved directly north and then was over farmland, and then again it's moved a little bit to the west. Um, I don't know that we, as the airport, get any input as to where that box is established, as long as it's clear of any sort of interference into airspace. Mm-hmm. So yeah, mm-hmm. uh, that answers my question. Okay. Hold on a second. Nope, you're good. Go for it. But part of educating the public is making them realize or understand that we have to have a safe place as aviators to be able to practice these maneuvers so we can go out and do what we do with these airplanes. For the, for example, those aircraft go to a lot of competitions, or I do it for proficiency. That We have to have a safe place to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, it's uh, it's got to be a reasonable location, and, um, and there might be a little bit of buzzing from the ground up, but um, that's mm-hmm. a safe place for here, for northern Colorado, to do that. And maybe there's a better location, but I don't know where that is right now. So, Yeah, and again, that would involve you know the FAA and stuff like yeah. that, too. I think as this board and I, this something that we can do positive, and one thing that I'm very passionate about, it, as particularly as we move forward, and I think this is excellent timing with the launch of the New Cities website, is just making sure that our, our website and our noise abatement, you know, the way we're conveying ourselves and our information is on point. So I would love to have that talk more. I'd love to get input on what's liked about it, what's not liked about it, what additional things that we can do. And input and questions like this only help that. Yeah. If I could add a comment, we're seeing an awful lot of increase in flight training, primarily because NOCO and formerly Jeffco, now uh, Front Range Rock, Rocky Mountain, I believe it is, uh, people are waiting at you know, 12, 14, point in line just to get just to get a box to get out of there Mm -hmm. so where are they coming they're coming to us and they're doing training in our area so consequently it's increasing the traffic it's increasing the traffic of the airport and also within the practice areas Mm -hmm. vice chair jordan um a couple things um rabbit when you said rabbit mountain sir that was what i know it's that's the box and i hear bob um Mm -hmm. going up and practicing and he'll be performing saturday the air show and he's been performing almost every weekend so he's been up for proficiency union reservoir i go to Greeley to do my practice work and i just like to get out of here and that takes me right over union reservoir to go out there and we will tend to do some turns and loops and things working our way out that way um to go practice so the both places you're talking about um were hot it was very clear and the other thing is i was on the website today to look for the agenda packet and totally unfamiliar with the layout so i got to looking around and they do have a uh, more of an FAQ question and answer mm-hmm. section now, and it had questions about mm-hmm. where do I call, what do I do, how does this work, who controls it, and it mm-hmm. was really, I think it was based on public questions. Yeah, and we've always had a, a really robust, yeah, you know, so very accessible. I just think, yeah, moving forward, th- again, just reviewing that and making sure we're doing the best that mm-hmm. we can. Yeah. yeah, so those areas, I've got the um, Colorado Pilots Association puts out the practice map, and then you can download it over your flight. And it's very congested, but the only, really the only other acrobatic um, practice zone is out at Fort Morgan. Mm -hmm. And they've got a clear, uh, they've got it out there. But all these little triangles are practice zones. And and then each have their own frequency uh, for people to talk. But Mm -hmm. those two here are definitely, you're not wrong. It's, yeah, that is what it is.
I hope that addressed the noise at least a little bit, at least on an education level. And um, yeah, Mr. Menza. Uh, like I said, they have to work, unless they're taking off and landing, they should be 1,500 feet above the ground. Um, there are times when people practice engine out over the farmlands. They'll come down lower to practice that engine out glide path. Um, that's usually you'll see them out over the, the, the open space land, but they should be above 1,500 feet. And that's what we can do in the future, Levi. If we get people together in the local area, maybe we can help haunt, head honcho that. But, you know, see the higher they can stay you know, over some of these areas that are used for public recreation, probably a, a good thing to try to communicate and articulate if we can cut kind of rules of the road for those train like we already have for that whole area that we've the map that network that we have for all the training areas it's a pretty nice map and it shows mm -hmm. frequency common area frequencies so you can tell the other pilots so you're, you're an instructor you mm -hmm. flew up here yeah so you're yeah. very familiar with that but maybe we can work towards uh collaborating with the other guys to kind of make sure people are doing that higher rather than lower in those particular areas and yeah, that's part of the discussion that we had this morning also during your meeting yeah. is just all right we're trying to hope to get you know right before blame covid for everything right before covid hit we had a the whole you know area here had a pretty good uh at least yearly if not you know a couple times a year instructor meetings and those kind of went away with covid so today was kind of like an attempt to get back to that creating you know the communication and you know addressing some of those issues yep all right well, thanks everyone for that levi did you have other updates no that's that's kind of been consuming my time along with um, issues of course with recent development around the airport and then the air show which are the next two items so we can just move on to there um i've got one question for you before that the drainage study ah <laughs> so my last drainage study was uh meeting was tuesday um we're into the final 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 details of it i was very much expecting and uh, since july i've very much expecting this just to be over with um the city did have a, a few more asks of the engineers on that um to be honest they were they were using a lot of acronyms and i didn't 100 percent ask no uh, quite understand what they were asking for but the, the short of the matter was oh my gosh that's easy we'll have that done for you by the end of the week so knock on wood next time we meet back here that it should be done done unless you know barring some catastrophe all right good yeah you know i'm very interested in that particularly because yeah. i i am how too. it relates to development and rfps for that Oh my gosh, it's only taken two years to get to this point with it, so. Nice um, yeah. Development notification discussion. So this is a follow-up from last time when I think um, we were asking if you could have some discussions internally, and this relates to what Dr. Grunsfeld was talking about in his public comment. Yep, so for the notification, um, we have had some discussions regarding that, certainly regarding because of all of the recent activity. Um, Concerning that, um, I had a conversation with Phil Greenwald, and it was pretty well understood that, yeah, that needs to be very clear moving forward. So the whole that whole process is still kind of in motion, so nothing's been 100% you know, set and goal yet, but it is, it's is—it's a target, and it's on our radar for making sure through, so that is uh, much clearer moving forward. Um, that's something that also Phil uh, expressed as kind of even his point of notification for getting notified about s stuff like that. So has been discussed there hasn't been any definite movement on it yet do you have an expectation of potential timing for that i don't we're still kind of in we're uh, to give over some some additional information we're still kind of in in talks with um, the faa regarding development around that area um, so i think we're kind of we're pushing through that at the moment moving forward on to what you know it's going to look like in the future as far as the entire notification process goes with uh, projects and stuff like that. So that'll be a, a part of that. Okay. And I definitely want the um, paddleboard discussion yeah. to come up in there as well. Yep. Um, okay. Board comments, questions about that right now? Or? Do we need to? Vice Jordan. Do we need to put that on the agenda to have um, either a study or a discussion to have this all translate into action oh that's a good question we could discuss that here and what we might think would be a, a positive thing for that um i'm not sure Just in the short answer our, you know so we can figure out what we need to do yeah. um practically um after we get some more input and uh 
uh, possibly have Phil here or planning his own. Yeah, it might potentially be a good idea. It might be that one might be a potentially good one to come back as, as yeah. this process is kind of worked through and mm-hmm. kind of see. I mean, it you know it might be solved you know in a month or two months. Okay. Um, it's still all kind of fresh. It's still all kind of you know being flushed out. I mean, I can tell you, my hope, Vice Chair Jordan, was that we were, you know, believe I was going to have those discussions in the city. They would hopefully put together some sort of a proposal, since mm-hmm. that does need to be a council action mm-hmm. to adjust the ordinance. Um, that then, at that point, we can weigh in and provide a recommendation to the council as well. Yes. There you go. That was my hope. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, excuse me, Councilmember McCoy. No, I just, I just tuned in after you said that I said I think that's the best way to to approach it uh, that way it all looks official and it all uh, comes across as hey you know we don't want to make these same mistakes again we don't want to get caught flat-footed on this stuff and that way it'll uh, come across as a lot more kinder gentler uh, and uh, <laughs> and maybe not have any sort of thing like hey you guys left us out of the decision making process <laughs> don't leave us out again you know somehow get it to come across in a much more positive way thank you um bef- anyone else on that one before we move on to the did you have one mr Metro? Uh, all right <laughs> if you change your mind let me know um before we move on to air show the other thing that was on my radar was the study session with the council in october Okay. This is something that uh, Councilmember at All Ferrying brought up last month. I want to say in one of the meetings. I don't know if there's been any further discussion of that. Getting just it very little. Or just want to make sure we're all in the loop and now, able to participate. So, if I recall correctly, I think that's on the 29th. If I recall correctly, it's on the schedule for. Um, so, okay. really, we've we're just at the stage where we're setting up meetings to talk about that. So, uh, I'll be meeting with uh, Phil and Joni Marsh um, on the 16th regarding the, the preliminary steps on kind of what we're going to start preparing for that. And, of course, I'm sure we're going to be looking for input from the city council and stuff like that on the information that they want to hear about. Okay. So that's October 29th is the tentative date, correct? Yes. All right. Pretty sure. And so we have a – sorry, I'm trying to – mm-hmm. It's a city council study session. Yeah. Um, we have a board meeting on October 10th. So I think okay. that would be a good one for there us to be able to discuss and kind of make sure we're all aligned prior to that. Yeah, that'd be a great so discussion item for that. Council has it, yeah. or anything that city staff has yeah. worked out in advance would be good. Yeah, any ideas we can throw out there would be great. Okay. Yeah. So I will make sure we have that on uh, our agenda for the tenth. Okay. Air show. Levi, Fun. Vice Chair Jordan, who wants oh, to? I'll pass off? it back to Melinda there. <laughs> what air show? <laughs> we're having an air show saturday uh we've been out there today sweating and putting stuff up and the barricades are up uh, notams are filed we got all of our permissions through the uopp process at nine o'clock this morning uh levi got us the permissions for parking over yes. on the public works i was gonna mention that got that printed out i got Good. my liquor license my everything's um we're as legit as we can be um our air boss is on the field that we're marking it t- the, tonight um the uh, box we've got our announcer uh, all those people are arriving tonight the acts are probably coming in right they, about now the, i thought i heard them yeah, they okay were, yeah, I heard them coming in. Um, so the performers are starting to arrive. And then so tomorrow morning we have our 8 o'clock briefing with the mm-hmm. FAA. Um, and I think Matt needs to be at that. So I ne- wanted to check with you about that, yeah. And then um, uh, that will be in base camp at the maintenance hangar. Mm-hmm. Um, so they were set up for that. Uh, we got to get tables and chairs over there with Steve. I need to come get your tables and chairs. Um, and so we'll have our briefing at 8 and then go through the rehearsal. Uh, for the air show, and the public's going to start to know tomorrow that there's mm-hmm. really something going on. But the uh, variable message boards have been up since last weekend. Uh, we threw out the yard signs tonight. Uh, mm-hmm. Kevin took some, and um, we're about there. And so tomorrow is a full day on the field to getting it done. Some vendors will come in and start laying things mm-hmm. out and setting down. Uh, we'll start marking chalk in the morning, and I've got several. I've got at least, gosh, at least a dozen volunteers showing up to help. Um, and then we roll. 7 a.m. Saturday morning, gates open. We'll be there about 4 or 5. And then uh, yeah. have a good day. And it'll be fun to get this in the rearview mirror. 
<laughs> it's been a long haul. Yeah. I've been yeah, I came for a year to these board meetings just to report on this. It's pretty wild how long this has been. And that's um, that's something that I'd add as a comment. I think to to plan a good air show we need at least a year years. to do it's it two. at least yeah. a year it's over two and we know already a few things that that the ball got dropped on that we'll work on if we're going to have a next one so when this one's over we will have um a cocktail party and conversation and decide um you know what we're going to do and do, does this team want to stick together and roll it into a new one i can mm -hmm. roll the U uopp right over and uh if we want to look at two years or even space it to three or something we'll see and that's that's uh, uh something i would add at this junction because i thought about it and i think it's important um we might want to look at moving forward how we can potentially get ourselves listed as an actual city event every yes year. we have to because there's many events like that are technical city events but we're we're kind of separate even though we have a budget you know yeah. from the airport and we're you know city city entity for that we're not technically a city event i don't think so, so what the thing i was going to say to you was um when you expense the trash that you just paid for today mm -hmm. why i mean that was always um longmont brought us oh over. they did that before they always brought us like okay. 30 carts and then my volunteers put them all over the field okay. and they came we rolled them all back to the food truck area and they came and picked them up and if i don't recall even seeing anything on the line items for that and we couldn't even get access to the city you know we couldn't even get that mm -hmm. so i'm paying western waste down in boulder and uh it just is wrong you and know, there just, there there might be some way the cities have changed to do that because actually i made some phone calls and contacts in waste management and they actually kind of mentioned to me it's like oh we all we use western now yeah okay. so it, it might just be a, a function of the city it I feels don't know. weird it feels yeah. weird and then uh we used to partner with um longmont power and communication for water stations i think those went away with covid um, yes. The rest of the services, we do have to get those from other places. Yeah, so they no longer do the water stations. Yeah, I, did, I did discover yeah. that. Mm. But the, the waste was one where that used to okay. just be so easy. And so um, when we go back and look at all the expenses and mm -hmm. we can see. So I do know we have to request that sponsorship. And so we'll have some discussion, find out what the timeline is, but look at two years. It was always a two every two-year show. and then uh, But we could push to three. There's some big shows next year around here. Um, Northern Colorado Regional is having the... Uh, they're going to have the Thunderbirds wow. uh, September 20th and 21st yeah, yeah, and then Pueblo gets them the next weekend so they are going to bring back that great northern Colorado <laughs> air show next year um, and then we can tumble that's what we used to do with Boulder with their air show and they haven't had theirs in quite a while So, um, but otherwise we are can I all pause systems you just go. for a second yeah, Linda, yeah. No, um, I, Council Member McCoy I just, I just wanted to respond to that because um, I was I'm the liaison to the Parks and Recreation uh, okay. uh, and um, they were going through all the events that they do and it seems like this should be something that we should be able to uh, get on that uh, schedule with them so that we're not you know doing something the same weekend mm -hmm. because of course this is the Indeed. same weekend as Art Walk and, mm -hmm. and other things like that too so uh, I mean, that may be a, a good thing because people come in to see the air show during the day and stay mm -hmm. for the Art Walk and realize mm -hmm. what did this is happening in the evening here and then go back out to the air show uh when it's a little cooler to see any sort of drone activities and things like that that might be going on so so uh it it might be something that might is very positive but it needs to probably get on their schedule so that uh, we start recognizing overlap and everything like that thank you for that yeah, when just to, to answer that, but I do. Um, I go through all the schedules and look. We search for every event. We're driven by the performers' um, schedules as well. But the further out we do this, the better options mm -hmm. we have. But we definitely mm -hmm. were wedging in even two years ago with because we were going to have mm -hmm. this last year. So we had all of our dates for last year and then moved it up. So we had a year and a half to get our performers in, and it's still a challenge. Yeah. And so um, it was still a, definitely a, a rearranging. Yeah. yeah. Struggle. So yeah, so it's really um, because I'm concerned Pikes Peak Regional is going to move to September for mm. two years from now because mm. that August was brutal mm -hmm. and this was their date. So I, I imagine I expect them to come back and take their date back. And understandably, it was brutal down there mm -hmm. in August. It was, was crazy, good show, but crazy. And I got to go on the good day. So um, the yeah, so we'll look at dates and we'll look two to three years out and then uh, get us on the city sponsored events um yeah because we've yeah yeah 
Thank you. Can you just really quickly, I know there's not really much public here, but for the record, yes. timing um, on Saturday yes. for the public. Yeah, it's the public, the gates open at 7 um, for parking in the air show. And then um, it starts with a uh, pancake breakfast. And then the food trucks will be open if people want barbecue at 8 o'clock. Um, and then uh, the... Um, Air show portion begins with a car parade at 10:45, mm -hmm. and but all the vendors and exhibits will be open. The static, the it will be an air show all day because we've got the Colorado Historic Aviation Society flying in with 15 craft we heard today registered, and so they're going to be coming in, getting onto the static line for their judging. Mm -hmm. The we've got some other pilots that are coming in that are going to be on static uh, that have requested to be static, and they. I, I'm not sure if the Stearman's going to be there f doing flights, but the Sonoran Beauty is, yeah. and they'll be there, and then the Stearman should be there. So I tell people it's free, it's open to the public, it's completely free, no charge for entrance or parking. It's consumables. You either consume some flights, you consume some food and drinks, you consume some beer. Um, we do have com contribution buckets out, because this is about a $75,000 show right now, and we've had a lot of donations and in-kind contributions, but I think we're going to come in at about seventy-five. And um, so then you go, can go through on the field there and see all the exhibitors, St. Brain Valley School District, Ames, Spartan, uh, Exploration of Flight from Wings Over the, Ro Wings Over the Rockies. So we've got, a, uh, we've got the Air Force, their recruitment uh, experience. So we've got a really robust um, exhibit area. And then 1045 starts with the Coloradans coming down the runway. We've got the national anthem being sung by the gal who just sang at Oshkosh. Um, we have, what else, uh, Color Guard is being presented at that point. And then we go into the air show at 11, and that's when it's going to open with Matt going down the runway in the L-39, and then we move into the Game Bird. Uh, the Air Force has a glider acrobatics team. Uh, we got the Red Thunder Air Show, Warbird Fun, which is the Texans, Bob Freeman, which is the best show ever. And uh, then we roll back around to the Red, Red Thunder. They fly several times. Then the beach. More Warbird Fun, Bob Freeman, so we ca we have some loops um, that are going to happen. So right now the air show, the Red Thunder goes up at 227. The air show, they're saying 315 for it to end, which is mm -hmm. much later than we expected. Yeah. Then the band at some point will start playing in there, <laughs> depending on what's happening. Beer Garden will be open till last call, and then gates close at 5. And, uh, and then as soon as the airspace opens, the air show continues, because then all those historic aircraft are going to be leaving all the people who came in for static that are on the hotline on the hot ramp can go and uh, so we'll still have activity on the field and um, we've got the aero car uh, from Dale Katachis mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. Wade was putting it together today It'll oh be, that's why he had it yeah, out. <laughs> yeah he's gonna have it on the field um, he'll pull out the text and he's gonna have the phenom out just on static right at the entrance so it's gonna be um, assets that are on the field a lot of those a lot of um, inbound performers and really a great show and then uh, we'll wrap up. I've got a teardown team, and we'll put everything out to be retrieved, trash into a roll-off, and we'll we'll clean the airport for FOD, and then uh, go home and collapse. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Melinda, for the rundown. Thank yeah. you for everything you've done on it's, that. It's been a uh, it's been a heavy lift. It's yeah, been yeah. a big lift, yeah. But you know, I've mm -hmm. had six years. Come on. <laughs> Mr. Menza. Yeah, I just want to publicly acknowledge that the folks have put this together. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Melinda, I know you're going to probably collapse to sleep for a week on uh, Saturday night, but uh, Levi and everybody and then the city council um, being supportive, I think this is a huge thing for our community. Mm -hmm. It's a huge, there's so many secondary and tertiary effects of this from the community. Relationships, kids, families, uh, those folks are interested in aviation coming out and, and exploring. We saw some of that today with a couple little little kids walking around. So it's really important that we do this. And I know you put a lot of work into this. Um, I don't know how you have that all, all that energy, but uh, we we appreciate it. So thank you. Well said. Thank you. Anyone else? Levi, air show board member comments. Should be good. All right. Um, I'll close up information items, action items. We have none tonight. So we move on to our final public invited to be heard. If anyone would like the opportunity to speak again, come on down. Same rules apply as before if you can start with your name and address, five minute timer, 
and apologize again. We can't have a back and forth. I understand. Do you need me to repeat my name and address? Please. Uh, it's actually Louis Beaupre at 1650 Start Ant Circle in Longmont. Uh, first of all, I should have uh, thanked you earlier, so thank you uh, now. Um, before I move on to the issue, the first issue, um, as a resident, I, I didn't even know about the air show until I drove past my way to Silver Creek High School yesterday. So I follow the city on Facebook and I read, I get a subscription to the Times Call. Maybe I've just been asleep, but I try to pay attention to what's happening in the community. And I, I probably would have scheduled some time to go over there. I've since got a conflict I can't, but just FYI, it sounds like a fantastic show, and now I'm kind of regretful I can't can't make it. Um, nevertheless, thank you for sharing or having the discussion you did. I learned a lot. Um, I still have a lot of a lot I need to learn to better understand it because my takeaway was it sounded like. Yeah, no problem um, with union, no problem from the pilot's perspective and the FAA, union and Rabbit Mountain are designated fly zones. Guys, gals, do your thing. Um, I wanna learn more about that. Maybe I've gotta go through the FAA because it seems like as uh, populations and densities change and so forth, who in their right mind would have put a acrobatic zone over open space? I mean, by definition, open space is a place of rest and relaxation. And Matt, I appreciate you're a, a pilot, but you made a comment that told me you're a pilot, which is that ah, little noise up at 1,500 feet. It's not a little noise at 1,500 feet. Again, picture that Harley Davidson circling your neighborhood. Harley Davidson at 1,500 feet. It's not enjoyable. It's your neighbor taking their uh, their lawnmower. So, um, and Union Reservoir, when I'm out there, Mead High School is just one mile east and the highway, and there's all agricultural. It's wide open, so I'd love to, I want to learn later, and I know, I know I can't tonight. Could those zones be shifted just a mile this way or that way so that we don't have people buzzing the people trying to enjoy Rabbit Mountain and in Union in Reservoir? So um, I think that's it. Um, thank you, and maybe I can learn a little bit more if any of you have time after the meeting. So appreciate it. Thank you. We appreciate mm -hmm. it. Dr. Grunsfeld? John Grunsfeld, 229 Airport Road. I want to thank you for coming out and expressing that um, because I learned a lot too. Uh, on the new noise abatement procedure, a uh, recommendation might be if you could print up, maybe it's just because I'm too old school, but print up cue cards and put them at the FBO and the various flight schools so we did. people can grab them. Oh, like takeables. Yeah. Takeables, yeah. Okay. Takeables. You know, so that it's in your little kneeboard if people still use kneeboards. And because I'm not a total Luddite, um, you know, might contact, and I think, Melinda, you already said this is done, but for flight and see if they can get an overlay, you know, that has noise abatement procedures and aerobatic area marking and the frequency is basically what you would have on the cue card. Uh, and on the website under noise abatement, you know, it's a lot of words, but it doesn't have a map or, you know, our normal pattern that probably lives somewhere else, but people are tend to be pretty graphic when they go and look that up. And finally, do we have anything in the remarks section of the airport flight directory? There is. There is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Seeing no one else, I will close our final public invited to be heard. Board council, staff comments, board members. Anyone have any comments, Mr. Dean? Yeah, Levi. Uh, last time you mentioned the um, the fire inspections. How is that coming? Is that all done, or how did that go? I continued to kind of poke the fire department, and they, I can say, hey, let me know when you guys are, you know, throw your hands up, done, done, and then we'll start, you know, tracking down individual hangar owners. And they, the last I spoke with them a couple weeks ago, they said, hey, we're still having luck getting a hold of individual people and getting some done. So I'm kind of waiting on them to tell me when they want to do that final meeting with me, and then we'll move on to stage two, which will be um, collecting uh, what we did get inspected, what we didn't get inspected, um, and then starting to try to contact individual hangar owners to complete those uh, fire inspections on their hangars. Okay, thank you. Mr. Menza. Are they going to follow as a fire department to come back and follow up on us delinquents that had a couple things that were outlying because i know they, they hit me for not having an electrical socket to cover or something and that'll kind of be up to their discretion okay um i imagine if it's a more serious one they might if but if it wasn't they would probably just take it your word for okay. it but again that's kind of their discretion okay cool other board comments 
All right. Well, really briefly, um, just want to echo, thank you, Melinda, for all the work on the air show. Thank you for everybody who's done work at the air show. I look forward to seeing you all there on Saturday. Um, and also want to thank, uh, Louis, so thank you for the comments about noise. Um, I know you haven't been to our meetings before. We've, over the last couple months, have dealt with development issues and other things that came up because of public invited to be heard and people coming and raising the comments. So I appreciate you doing that, being willing to learn, mm -hmm. being willing to have a discussion, because it is how we you know, potentially could move to some sort of change if it's warranted and if we even have the ability to influence it. So thank you for doing that. Um, Council Representative. Council McCoy. Thank you. Um, well, unfortunately, I won't be able to be here. My niece is getting married on Saturday, and I'll, uh, and the whole family is going to be there. So, uh, but uh, and that is how it always uh, happens. Uh, you know, I, I haven't missed many of these, so I really do appreciate all your hard work and everything you put into it, and and value all your time and effort here. And I'm really impressed that all of you are here because uh, it, it doesn't happen on other boards. <laughs> so thank you for your time and commitment. Thank you. Staff, Levi, anything? Pretty good? All right. I've got a few things for future agenda items. We'll have the um, noise abatement program updates on a reg as a regular item. We'll have study session prep 1010. If anyone has anything else, let me know. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and declare the meeting adjourned for the evening. Thank you. Thank you.